Rick, we had heard SIO was coming out with some pretty hard-hitting articles about the program. What are they accused of doing? And then to our left over here is I-35. So basically, this twister took a path right where we are right now and just um, went right over here over I-35 and off to the uh, northeast from here. I remember my first first pitch. It was 30 years ago, and I did what Coach Blankenship said never do. It dribbled out oh, there. No. So I learned from then on, if you're going to throw it wild, over the head <laughs> right, of the catcher. Right. In fact, as Oswald drew his pistol and aimed to fire, Hawkins says McDonald caught the hammer between his thumb and finger. It was that close. It was uh, rather hectic for a while, yeah. And you slapped the cuffs on it. Hi everyone and thanks for joining us tonight. First on a Brady Street could see some big changes coming its way. Tulsa organization protecting families in violent situations needs your help tonight. Tonight we're getting a better look at that massive sinkhole that swallowed a man inside his Florida home. Each candidate has only two minutes to answer the question. Do you think that's going to be tough? I think so too. So my job is to keep them on track. We're going to go to the Rob Wallace campaign in just a moment. Also we're going to talk about District 1 Congress here in Oklahoma and the mercury keeps dropping. Chief Meteorologist Jennifer Zeppelin. Are you laughing there? In the <laughs> it's storm crazy, center with the right? We're all I laughing about I'm this. Going, aren't we? Okay, is it April 1st? And, and you can tell where the uh, the tornado skipped over and went over some trees. The tops of the trees are off, but the houses are fine. Sadness has gripped this OSU campus as the university pays tribute and honors those killed in last week's plane crash. Week six of our hometown tailgate and a few minutes ago, about an hour ago, we had some sprinkles, but things are looking better now, aren't yeah. they? And we're going to show you a real cool tradition they have here at Miami High School. It's called the dog walk. That's coming up in a few minutes. We usually root for the home team. You are, but I have a dog in the fight. This is my son, Tommy. He's a senior for Union Redskins. Hey, what's the game plan tonight? It's you Union versus uh, Booker T. Washington tonight. That's the uh, game of the week. John Moss will have more on that coming up later in sports. Now, a lot of news going on today, especially what's going on out in Los Angeles today, and Charles Ely has that back in the studio. Chuck? Tulsa's own Sonny Lee from radio station KBOO has been on the red carpet for the preparations and the award. This is the, uh, the South Sider pizza right here and the Bob Marley dip. It's excellent. You can't beat it yeah. whatsoever. Tonight, we're going to be giving away t-shirts yeah. on that t-shirt right Love there. That. And once again, if you know a vet, and a lot of us do know a vet, say thank you. Give them a call today. If they're not in front of you, give them a call and say thank you for everything you've done for our country. It could be a lot worse and probably will be a lot worse tomorrow when this cold freeze comes in. Yeah, I'm going to be bundled tomorrow and inside, that is for sure. We'll have gloves on, we'll have our heavy coats on. This is the second annual parade right before the home opener for the Tulsa Drillers. You saw a lot of um, little leaguers, you got Cub Scouts, you got Hornsby went by. It is a big night here at uh, One Oak Field. They were here early this morning and it was yes. quite a scene. It was rocking, wasn't it? Hi everyone and thanks for joining us tonight. First on a Brady Street could see some big changes coming its way. That depends on how a city council meeting goes tonight. The public will get its say before the council could possibly vote to change the name as part debate in recent months. Channel 8's Caitlin Alexander is live down at City Hall this evening with the latest. Caitlin. All right, thanks Caitlin. Changing the street signs would affect 30 different intersections. In other news tonight, the bitter custody battle over a three-year-old girl doesn't appear to be over despite a court ruling. South Carolina Supreme Court ordered the adoption of a little girl known as Baby Veronica to be finalized. Man and Melanie Capobianco legally adopted her before the birth father asserted his custody rights. A couple thought the fight was over, but as Mark Davenport reports, they still don't have Veronica. The court order to immediately return Veronica to the Capobiancos was sent to the Charleston County Solicitor's Office and the U.S. Attorney's Office. In a statement, the U.S. Attorney's Office says they have received the order and are consulting with state and federal federal law enforcement to determine the appropriate next steps. Meanwhile, the Cherokee Nation says they, along with Brown, will appear next Wednesday in a South Carolina family court to discuss pending motions. Former Tulsa police officer convicted of stealing from Hispanics is sentenced to 35 years in prison. Marvin Blaze Jr. was charged with five counts of armed robbery. Blaze was accused of pulling over Hispanic drivers, taking cash from their wallets and telling them to drive off. One of the victims was actually an undercover narcotics agent. The Blades had waived his right to a jury trial. Police make a peeping Tom arrest inside a South Tulsa store. 22-year-old Brian Heck was booked yesterday after getting caught in the Target store at 101st and Memorial. They say he used a small camera to spy on women inside the dressing room. A woman trying to unclose noticed the camera at the top of the stall and alerted security. Bond for Heck was $10,000. 
Well, it was put in place to make Tulsa a greener city and encourage its citizens to recycle. But now the city's green waste removal program is being questioned by many, including Mayor Bartlett. Channel 8's Ethan Calloway reports many feel they've been kept in the dark about problems with the program. Will your child have enough teachers when school begins? With just 14 days until the start, Tulsa Public Schools are looking for 92 instructors. Channel 8's Kim Jackson talked to the principal at one school that started today. When we come back, plans to move a historic bridge along Route 66. Plus, snake bites are on the rise here in the Sooner State. Find out why and which snakes are most likely to strike. Smoke billowed from the top of an Oklahoma City coffee shop today. Neighbors coffee caught fire just before 11 this morning near 11th and Broadway. No serious injuries have been reported there. Investigators say it appears a coffee roaster at the top of the building may have sparked that blaze. City of Catoosa is planning a moving part of history. The old Rice Street Bridge spans Route 66 and has been closed for a couple years now. The bridge is too small for modern day cars and needs repair. ODA plans to replace it eventually, but the old structure won't be demolished. City plans to reuse it. Well, keep a close eye on your ankles. The number of snake bites is climbing here in the Sooner State. According to the Oklahoma Poison Control, snake bites have increased between January and August for the past three years. So far this year, 142 people have been bitten by snakes, and this time last year is 126. Most common snake bites in Oklahoma is from the Copperhead. Rattlesnakes are the second most common. Experts are blaming the weather, more rain, and cooler temperatures. Another round of storms potentially early next week. You know, we usually want rain this time of year, but not now, right? Not now. Everybody's getting a serious workout outside having to mow that grass, so yeah. I think everybody wants a little break. Enough's enough. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Thanks, Tamper. All right. PGA Championship is underway in New York. Find out where Tiger stands after the first round coming up after the break. Kickoff. It's at 7 o'clock. You asked me if the Rams are going to win the Super Bowl. No, either are the Browns. So I'll just no, go ahead and yeah, take care of that. Yeah. Good, good guess. Yeah, All right, yeah. thank you. More rain tonight? We do. Uh, we have some strong to severe thunderstorms down in the south between McAllister, Stigler. That's the area we're watching right now. Very heavy rainfall, gusty winds, and lightning. A big concern. Mm. All right, thanks. That's our news tonight. Thanks for watching. Wheel Fortune up next. We'll see you tonight. Sorry for this, but it's really coming down right now. I want to tell you a quick story. I met a woman about an hour ago. She was trapped in a medical building just on the other side of the street from this is St. John Hospital. We've heard a lot about and seen about. She was trapped there for 30 minutes and she saw a hole in the ceiling where she could uh, wave some insulation and some kids saw her and rescued her. And today she said, I'm still looking for my car. It's nowhere in the parking lot and it could be anywhere. Just uh, another example how powerful this storm was yesterday. Chuck? Well, Mark, if you look at the sort of the developed part of Joplin there, it's hard to get an overview. Uh, the areas that have been badly damaged, 20, 30, 40 percent of the city, can you put a, a quantity on it for us? Well, I've heard from an official 30 percent of Joplin has had significant or major damage. Now, if you just go a little ways this way, there's no, no problem. You know, there's no damage at all. And, and you can tell where the, uh, the tornado skipped over and went over some trees. The tops of the trees are off, but the houses are fine. So you can tell where the tornado skipped over the houses and went on. But there's like a mile wide of destruction and several miles long. So anywhere you look where we are right now, I call this ground zero. Um, there is destruction everywhere here, Chuck. As Mrs. Kennedy and the crowd yells, and the President of the United States. So you didn't know the struggle that ensued here, that this would take on <laughs> national implications here? No, no, it really didn't. This is Walter Brown Guide in our newsroom, and President Kennedy has been shot in Dallas, Texas. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You'll excuse the fact that I'm out of breath, but about 10 or 15 minutes ago, a tragic thing from all indications at this point has happened in the city of Dallas. Here to the in grainy photographs and film and countless conspiracy theories, 112263 sticks like a migraine in our collective memory. That President Kennedy is dead. There is still no official confirmation of this. Ray Hawkins has a memory of the day our president was assassinated. No one else has. Didn't really dawn on me what had happened or the gravity of what was happening.
It was a part of history that dark day in Dallas when he unknowingly met John F. Kennedy's killer face to face. And 81-year-old Ray Hawkins is retired today. 50 years ago, though, he was a young cop in Dallas full of swagger. The confident smile and cool shades he wore as easy as a badge on his chest and white-handled pistol sticking out from his hip. But mostly, Officer Hawkins worked traffic and accidents, even on the day the president came to town. Everybody was happy and looking forward to the president. And of course, the kids were all lying in the street with their little flags waving. And, uh, I would say it was very a joyous mood, I guess you might say. Certainly Hawkins has changed a lot since then, and so has Dallas. A half a century has a way of doing that. But parts of the city have been preserved to look much like they did 50 years ago. Today, two white painted X's on Elm Street in front of Dealey Plaza mark the exact spots where Kennedy was shot. Visitors rush there for a quick photo or to look up at the sixth floor corner window of the Texas School Book Depository where Lee Harvey Oswald waited to fire his rifle. Barely three miles away, the Texas Theater in Dallas's Oak Cliff neighborhood is still standing today. For more than 80 years, home to the biggest stars in Hollywood. But it's most famous for a visitor who slipped in without pain on the afternoon of 11 63 After killing Kennedy and then police officer J.D. Tippett, Oswald ended up here. It wasn't long before the theater was raining police, as Hawkins described the scene, and he had a front row seat to a real life drama no movie script could ever make up. You didn't know that this man had just killed the President of the United States? No, I did not know then. He reminisced recently in the same movie theater, preserved much like it looked five decades earlier. Hawkins sitting directly behind where Oswald was first spotted, third row, fifth seat in, watching war as hell. Then the brief but violent confrontation between Oswald, Hawkins, and fellow officer Nick McDonald, three seats closer to the aisle. Was it truly a life and death struggle? Yes, it, I would say that. Of course, we had more policemen than we did bad guys, but... Uh, it very easily someone could have gotten shot. In fact, as Oswald drew his pistol and aimed to fire, Hawkins says McDonald caught the hammer between his thumb and finger. It was that close. It was uh, rather hectic for a while, yeah. And you slapped the cuffs on it? Yes, sir. The only words Hawkins remembers Oswald saying was, I ain't done nothing, followed by screaming as they took him away. He recalls that Oswald was roughed up a bit during the arrest. Again, they didn't know he had shot the president. All they knew was that he had just killed one of their own, and they didn't like that one bit. Yeah, they roughed him up all right. Did you uh, contribute to that? <coughs> I'm not sure, not that I know of. <laughs> not that you know of. <coughs> not that I can remember. <coughs> In other words, read between the lines. I didn't shoot anybody, sir. I haven't been told what I'm here for. He never saw Oswald again after that. Of course, two days later, Jack Ruby would shoot and kill Oswald in the basement of the Dallas police station. For Ray Hawkins, what happened inside this old movie theater the afternoon of 11 22 63 is now a hazy, distant memory but one he says turned out as well as could be. And to play an important role in a slice of American history, dark as it may be, any actor who's graced the big screen here would be proud of. If there had to be something like this, well, it was great to be a part of it. <laughs>